Hi, and welcome back to The Restoration. This episode is all about the paint, paint, and more paint. But first, I have to tell you, I just had a conversation with an Adam, and he told such a wonderful story, and I want to believe him, but you know how Adams are. They make up everything. <laughs> <laughs> I respect of everything. I love scientific jokes. These are some of the parts that I had uh, from last time that I put the phosphoric acid on. And I'm going to hit them one more time with the sandblaster. They've been sitting without protection except for the phosphoric acid for a long time. So just one more time through the sandblaster and then I'm going to paint them. Um, sometimes that phosphoric acid leaves um, little residual stuff. That crust down and stuff. So I'm gonna make sure this is all cleaned up and ready to paint. I filled in the pits here with some body filler and then sanded it out to make it smooth. On this shaft, there was some rubbing and I'm going to try to put, um, right in this area here, is just kind of chewed up. So I'll put some filler in there, try to get that smooth. Not structural, so just cosmetic. Alright, there's that, uh, that shaft. That should look good once it's painted. On this panel, there's a little run there, and I've learned from watching YouTube and car TV that you take yourself a little razor blade and you just work it down. So, so far, there's been, this is, I think, the second one. And so I'll just take my time, work this down, get this baby primed and painted. Well, there's a lot of painting to do. Um, got the four wheels cleaned up again, a lot of dust on them. I'm um, going to scratch up the surfaces a little bit and uh, get that ready. Uh, this little screen needs to be painted. And also this has some, some I don't know, discoloration on it from something that sat on it. So I'm going to repaint that. And then... This is, well, let's come around this way so we can see. This is all the stuff I need to paint. I mean, tons and tons of stuff. But I'm in the painting mood as far as, that, that's what that painting mode that is. And so, time to do some painting. It's been a long time since I've um, pour 15 that and prime that with the epoxy primer. So I'm hitting it with some um, 320 just to kind of break the surface and we're going to get it painted. And these are the ones that are scuffed up with the 320 and this is one right prior so you can see there's a pretty good difference between the two. It just turns it a little ashier, a little grayer. Now we're going to get some paint on it.
Here's the first room I did, and the mistake I made on that was trying to cover that black on the first coat. What happens when you do that is you get runs. So, there's a couple runs I gotta fix. Now, what I should have done is like I did it on the second one, which is just dust it. So you can still see the black, it's not fully covered. Let me see if I can get a better shot of that. But uh, it's almost, instead of primer gray, it's darker because it has the, uh, I didn't shoot it on to cover, I just put on a little light coat. So that's how to do it, instead of, see how that looks like primer? And this kind of looks like not totally primered. That's how it should be, first coat. This is called biting off more than you can chew. <laughs> What I've realized with all of this stuff is that uh, it takes time for me to prime, because I was going to prime it and paint it today, all that, oh yes, and these wheels, I mean, so they're primed, I was going to paint everything too, but it takes time to walk from here, over there, up and down. I'm old, I'm tired, so that's it for today. I'm going to have to paint tomorrow or another day. Well, just a couple of little runs there, and I'm going to hit it with a little bit of sandpaper and throw the color on. And the color is like cream white. See how that looks. It is so difficult to get that spray paint gun to paint this part in here and here. So what I'm gonna do is before I paint it, I'm gonna go ahead and touch the, the inside where the, the gun will have a hard time getting that and just go ahead and paint that. And here's everything after the first coat. Gonna go back out there and get on coat number two. Now this is actually the next day when I'm painting these. And it is so much easier. I thought, why not paint the top of them? Because I was tired of having to try to fight them with the hangers that I use. So I sat them down, painted the tops, and then I'm gonna come in and sit it uh, down and let that dry and then actually another day shoot the bottoms of it and you can see it's a little windy out there but I'm, it's not too bad and I'm trying to time it to where it's not the gust of the wind and it's turned out pretty decent Well, here how uh, they stand after a couple coats of paint. I may throw one more coat on her. And I may throw a coat on once everything's put back together just to knock out any scratches or anything that didn't get painted. But we'll see. Ta-da! And that's the rims complete on the front. I still have to do the backs and uh, it's the same process. I'm going to let these sit for a little while, flip them over, and then paint the back. Just a couple of little runs, but it's, they really look pretty doggone good. And um, um, once I get the tires mounted, I'll scrape the little runs off. I am in an absolute mad scramble to get things painted. I'm trying to get them done before it turns cold out. 
Um, it's cold in the it, it's fall and it's about to turn winter and I want to get as as many pieces painted because now I'm thinking about the assembly phase. So I bought this little detail gun and the reason I got that is because what I want to do is when I put the hardware on there, the bolts are not going to be painted. And I thought if I could get an airbrush or small gun, I could paint that inside the garage. Well, this thing turns out to, it, it might work. That paint gun is cheap, but it really paints well. All right, I had saw a little bit of a dry spot on this one. And so I reshot that one. That one's brand new shot. These two. So today I got enough painted that in the winter time I can start assembling. So this is this is real cool. This gun was working so well I decided to, to paint with it. The thing is is I didn't thin it down enough. Now, I'm not knowing that right now, but you can't hardly tell from this video, it looks like it's going on very atomized, but it is not. So I start messing around with the settings and it, it's really blotchy, but once the paint got onto there with the little blobs, it did flow out and this is another coat that I put on there and I'm still working trying to get that gun to work. Um, but I ended up switching to this gun, which is the air gun and it atomized it beautifully and turned out really nice. Now the reason I switched guns is I hadn't figured out what was causing it and I just didn't have the time so I just switched guns uh, to the gun that I knew was going to work right then. As I start to mask this off I, I realized what I should have done was shot the black first then mask it off and shot the orange because it's so hard to get the corners right on there. There's some rounded edges, so it's hindsight is 2020. Here are the last of the miscellaneous parts that need some kind of cleaning and well, cleaning and painting. Um, this is going to need a little welding. Oh, my father kind of rig this up to do something. I'm going to try to repair that, get it back to how it looked in the factory. But this is it. Sandblasting, wire wheeling, priming, painting. But the big parts are done, so now i got to start whittling away at these little ones. Well, it's time to attack this little part that my dad did. Uh, you can see where the uh, original hole was. I'm not sure exactly why he did that, but I cut that off, weld it up, and get it re-drilled. I used my press to punch out that piece that was welded into that middle hole. Well, it's not perfect, but that didn't turn out too shabby. Once it gets painted, you hardly can even tell the little the flaws that were in there. I thought I only had those few parts to go, but then I found, forgot this box of parts right here. So I re-sandblasted them, and I'm in the scramble to try to paint before it gets too cold. And here's that part that I just did once it got sandblasted. So you can see it turned out fairly decent. Not too shabby. Well, I'm out in my shed because it's so windy, so I pull a couple things out of here and I'm gonna get the I've got two coats of epoxy primer on these parts here. And now it's time to put the gray primer on. The Harbor Freight gun here, the little cheap gun, and a little turbine one. Just narrow the beam down to a circle, slow the pay, paint rate down so it doesn't, you know, go everywhere. It's working perfectly, especially with that epoxy primer. It comes out of there like uh, perfectly atomized. Now the epoxy, I mean, now the gray primer. Well, here's the three coats of the gray primer here. 
and two coats of epoxy primer all these little parts and now it's time to put the color on them black and orange well here's the fully painted pieces now And now back to Tractor Chat. In color. Ooh, ooh. Hi, and welcome back to Tractor Chat, the tractor talk show that's sweeping the globe. Rihanna was here today. Rihanna! Thank you for stopping in and teaching us how to tweak those diesel fuel injectors using nothing but tweezers. A beautiful songstress and awesome with fuel injection. Guys, we're almost out of time. We only have time for one more caller. Jessica Alba, you're on the air. Hi, Chaser1963. It's me, Jessica Alba. And as you know, I am really, really foxy. And I know I speak on behalf of not only the hot Hollywood starlets, but also the supermodels when I say we miss seeing your gorgeous physique. So for old time's sake, would you please show us your washboard stomach? Well, Jessica Alba, for you, I'm going to make an exception and show my six pack abs. As you Hollywood ladies know, I'm trying to be taken serious as a tractor talk show host and not just known for my perfectly sculpted Adonis like body. So this will be the last time. Ladies, feast your eyes. Breaking news, breaking news. This just in, it's coming to us live from the third grade playground, our third grade news correspondent, Warren Peace, has this report. There has been a truce declared on the playground, a truce between the boys and girls. It's sketchy to who started it, but right now this report, a truce on the playground by Warren Peace. And that's all the time we have this time on Tractor Chat. See you next time. Same tractor time, same tractor channel. Do you have the telephone out here? No. Jessica Alba was here. Jessica. Oh, not Jessica Alba. Rihanna. Uh, I want to be taken care of.